Hey, welcome to another episode of Freedom on Fire. I'm your host, Rob Bob TV Brown. Huh. Talk about um, David Wasserman Schultz. Um, we just went over the um, situation with the DNC lawsuit and how they basically admitted to everything that, yeah, yeah, we cheated. We cheated to get Hillary Clinton to the nomination, and we don't care what you got to say, and you gave us your money, and that's that. Take us to court for your money. Well, we tried to take them to court for the money, and they threw it out. But in order for them to throw it out, they basically had to admit that, yeah, we cheated. And basically the judge is saying, hey, here they go. They, they admitted they cheated. Um, can't give you the money because it was gifts of love. You know, you gave it as a gift. Uh, but hey, now you know, do it what you know. Let other people know and hit them in the pocket. Let them get all their money from the corporate donors. Even the corporate donors will probably back away after they find out these suckers cheat. So that is a gift to utilize right now. Now, will they re- appeal it? Well, Jared and uh, Elizabeth, uh, uh, they're going to go back to the quarters and talk about the next stage. Next day could be a pill. But just this alone was a win. Yet it was not a win, but it was a win. It basically says yes to DNC. Just say, and this is a gold mine for the Republican Party when it comes to ad campaigns. That's going to cause the Democratic Party to get slaughtered. Not only millions will continue to leave after this particular um, conviction, I mean this admission but now they're telling the 2020 2018 boycott of democrats what are they going to do they're going to go vote for republican no they're not going to vote vote for them either it's just that the po- Re- democrats are going to lose miserably because they don't have to steal nobody votes they lost votes you lost it anyway let me get to the situation where enwan awam and his situation right now um this brother right here, right there, no, no right, this brother right here, <laughs> trying to get used to it, right there. Um, this brother's name is Andre Taggart. He found hard drives uh, tied to Imran Enron and turned them over to the FBI. This guy was a, a Marine, um, and he turned out, turned over these hard drives uh, tied to Enron, uh, Enron. Enron. Enron was another corrupt, corrupt company. <laughs> uh, this is from the Daily Caller. Um, uh, Luke Rosaic, investigative reporter. Anyway, a Marine who provided key evidence in the FBI, FBI case against Democratic Representative Debbie Watcher, man, she sucks. A uh, former IT employee said he is appalled by her claim that Islamophobia led U.S. Capitol Police to frame the former staff, staffer. I, this is what makes me sick about the Democrats. They're always blaming on somebody else and don't take responsibility. It's never me. It's always you. It's you. It's always you. It's never me. I could do no wrong. Also on Wednesday, two of Imran's and one's relative went on the record to say they think he would do anything, anything for money. Anything. Now let me stop here. Because I showed you the photo that Imran was with Seth Rich at the night of his murder. It's right there. They say this guy's Imran. And Seth is in the front. And if you see the statement from his own family members, his relatives, it say Imran Awan relatives went on the record to say they think he would do anything for money. Anything. Anything for money. Andre Taggart alerted the FBI to the damaged hard drives and a cache of electronics tied to Enron and Juan, a former IT specialist for dozens of House Democrats. Dozens. So there, there goes my theory of why those who knew they should have been on the Bernie Sanders train, they should have flipped over. Um, and leave the Clinton train and go over to the um, Bernie Sanders train. I was wondering why not one go over to his side. It's because of stuff like this. See, this IT specialist, he was an IT specialist for dozens of House Democrats. And imagine the dirt as an IT specialist you can probably get on a politician that you can send back to Debbie, watch her, man, she sucks. And they could say, hey, if you vote against Hillary Clinton, this information is going to come out. 
See, that's just my theory. Not saying it's fact, but it's my theory, and I'm sticking by it, and it sounds like things that do happen in Washington, D.C. Awan is the central figure in the criminal investigation of a suspected procurement fraud in violation of the congressional IT network, including diverting data to off-site server. Here we go. You want to talk about your Russian hacking? No, it was no Russian hacking. We already had people, crooks, inside the Democratic Party looking into their servers. Like Imran Awan. Taggart told the Daily Caller News Federation investigation group Wednesday that it was amazing that Wasserman Schultz, a Florida Democrat, describes Imran as a victim of religious discrimination by a law enforcement officer. <laughs> Taggart rented the Northern Virginia home of Awan, who had frantically moved out after learning authorities were unto him. So he tried to do a quick sale. It pisses me off, said Taggart, a black Marine who says his vote, he votes Democrat. He believes Wasserman show is crying wolf and devalued the meaning of genuine dis discri discrimination while also opposing herself and the nation to risk. Wasserman shows claim Imran Awan is being persecuted by the Capitol Police and the FBI after she was told that he is suspected of data transfer violation, even as she lamented the seriousness of of the hacking of the DNC committee, Wasserman Schultz was chairwoman of the DNC National Committee when its IT network was hacked in 2016. Surely you see the light bulb going off, people. You see the dots are connecting. I just want to get these guys locked up and exposed, and now Taggart told the DNCNF, the people who facilitated them should also be locked up, as far as I'm concerned. The DNC NF cited Taggart without naming him in a July report that the FBI had seized a hard drive and electronics. Imran attempted the next day to board a flight to Pakistan, but was arrested by the FBI at Dulles Airport in, uh, International Airport in Washington, D.C. Taggart said he made the decision to no longer be anonymous because he is concerned that his fellow Democrats are making a grave mistake by ignoring a scandal with serious criminal and national security implications. I'm absolutely disgusted with everything going on in the country right now, mostly because the right-wing conservative, but with respect to this situation, political affiliation is irrelevant, Tiger said. Enron Awan and his wife, Hania Alvi, were indicted August 17, 2017, on four charges relating to sending money to Pakistan fraudulently in an apparent attempt to escape from a broader ongoing investigation of cybersecurity and theft issues. Him, his wife, his brother, all working down there, there's no way they could do this without help. If we can drag Trump and his wingnuts through the mud... For the Russian influence that they are having, then it's only fair that we also expose this crap, Tagger said. After Imran Awan realized the hard drives and electronics had been left in the house he rented to Tagger, Awan threatened to sue him to get the equipment back. Awan also listened to the house for sale shortly after signing a multi year lease with Tagger at a latter said. So, in other words, I told you, try to do a quick sale. And uh, he was rushing out the house because he was scared he was going to get arrested. He was trying to leave the country, and he left this there. He forgot. <laughs> uh, they took advantage of us, of us, Taggart said, describing a series of financial aggressive um, uh, and dishonest interaction he said he had with Imran. Taggart uh, said he believes Iwan would do anything for money. The same term including relatives have used and described the couple. Wasserman Show has rejected concerns about Enron as absurd, laughable, even though he had access to all of her congressional emails and files, as well as her iPad password, and is suspected by police of cybersecurity violation and had long been accused of defrauding people for financial gain. Also, Wednesday, an Amwan relative, Saeed Ahmad, told the Daily Mail that for the sake of money, they would have done anything. Imran might have been selling this information. 
Evidence suggested that the Wands were running a ghost employee scheme, collecting $6 million in salaries from taxpayers, even though only a few of the six people on the House payroll actually perform IT work. Congressional offices signed off on those timesheets for unknown reason. Imran Awan's brother, Abid, operated a Virginia car dealership while being paid $160,000 annually working for multiple House Democrats. The dealership received $100,000 um, from an Iranian fugitive linked to Hezbollah, according to the court records. Amjad Khan, a former business partner, told the Daily Mail that Abid would just go in to the hill a couple of times a week in a couple of hours just to show his face. On paper, I think Abid and Imran were both working, but in reality, only one was working and the other was running the car business. Khan added that when he would go to D.C., Abid would spend $3,000 or $4,000 a night. Abid worked for New York Democratic Rep. Yvette Clark during a time when 120000 in IT equipment went missing from that office. Clark, chief of staff, signed a form Issuing, ensuring the missing equipment would become a problem with congressional auditors. Clark office did not tell police at the time the form was signed, and the bead remained employed for six more months. Clark and her staff repeatedly refused to explain, even though the money would have been enough to hire four staffers to provide service for a Brooklyn constituents. Clark fired a bead on September 2016 after the House administrations told her they were auditing all finances connected to the Wands. Four months later, Capitol Police banned the brothers from congressional IT work. Now, um, let me uh, talk about this a little bit. All right, now, we know already know the Wands brothers worked for Debbie Wasserman Schultz and a whole bunch of other Democratic leaders. We also know that they are good at techs, tech. They're good at data. Uh, so for them to have access to people computer, whether well, they had the password or not, they, they know how to crack codes to get into a computer. They know how to crack into areas of the computer where they can gain information. Nine times ten, they got information on these political leaders and used it as leverage to make a demand. David Wasserman Schultz, not saying she did, but if I was criminal minded, you've been blinded, uh, I would um, say, hey, Maybe we can work something out. You know how to get information on these. I want to make sure I keep a leash on these guys. The best way I can keep a leash on these guys, if you, if you see any information while you're checking out their computer, give it to me. I'll pay you big money for it. Now, these are just my theories, but these theories make sense. That this ringleader in this whole thing is Debbie Watson Schultz, and the NYN and NY brothers are just their hen her henchmen. And she got the information on these people and, these, and used these information as leverage, blackmailing, uh, to get these people to do what they want, including rigged election for Hillary Clinton, as we went over just now. Now, this is just my theory. But the bottom line is, uh, his family and others said he's willing to do anything for money. You give him enough money, he'll do anything. Anything. And I'm thinking, murder? Anything. They didn't say anything except murder. And we already know that he was with um, Steph Rich the night of the murder. Something smells stink. Maybe it's my feet. I'm Bob TV, Freedom on Fire. Peace. Hey, this is your boy Bob TV with Freedom on Fire and Rob Report. I want to thank you for watching the webcast. Make sure you share these um, segments all across your social media network. Um, like and share, subscribe, and maybe I invite a couple other people to do the same thing. Uh, you make the difference. I also want to thank you for those who support this channel through Patreon. Uh, whether it's 10, 50 cent to $50 million, I, I, it goes right back into what we do here. Uh, so like the lights that you're looking at right now, that's because of something that you did. So I really appreciate it. I want to thank my man Veggie Matic for the Blue Yeti mic, one of the top microphones out right now. Um, he knew I needed the mic, so he blessed me with it. So all of you guys make the difference into this channel growing, and I really want to appreciate you for that. Also, by all means, again, continue to uh, share your comments um, at the bottom of each video. Just don't get so visceral to the people who may disagree with me or may disagree with you. This calling out name stuff, um, that's not for this channel. So please try not 
to call people names, personal names. Now you can call some of the stuff they talk about crap. I say that, but uh, <laughs> uh, but just don't attack people personally. Uh, words really hurt when you start attacking people personally because these people really believe these things, and you're not gonna take away their belief by calling them names. So please don't do that on this channel. But nevertheless, I appreciate you guys. We're shooting for 2,000 now, uh, so I need your help. So. Um, as my past would say, reach one, teach one. I mean, let's reach out. You got the information, make sure you share with other people and try to get them to subscribe to the channel so we can grow and expand. I'm Bob TV. Freedom on fire. Rob Report. Peace.